Okay, welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Uh, this set of videos is or is on chapter 10, uh, simple interest, and these are going to be the theory videos. Now there's not too much in this chapter uh, to cover, so I'm not sure if this is going to take one or two videos. Um, really probably should take more than two videos, unless of course I spend a lot of time babbling. <laughs> okay. So um, let me, you know, get to it, right? Okay, uh, get the new slide and get my handy dandy pen here. Okay, um, this chapter is on simple interest. Now I created this slide that says simple interest versus compound interest. Um, compound interest is going to be covered in chapter 12. Right now, the whole idea here is. Um, What's the difference between simple interest and compound interest? All right, well, simple interest is, let's say we put, um, to keep numbers simple, let's say we deposit $100 in a bank account, all right, under simple and uh, uh, under an account for compound interest. And let's say that both accounts get 10% interest on the account. And let's just say this here is date at 1 1, all right? And after one year, so on 12 31, um, the interest that 10% uh, interest on $100, the interest that would be earned, all right, would be 10%. So the interest that would be earned is $10. And if we add the principal, remember that's the principal and this is the interest, we would have a balance of $110 on 12 31. Now, that's one year. Okay, so in year two, we're going to uh, get an additional $10 in interest because we're only getting the 10% interest on the principal amount. That's what simple interest is. So at the end of 10 year, at the end of the second year, if we haven't done anything to this account, we're getting $10, again, 10% on the hundred, we're getting $10 in interest. And so our account would have a balance of $120 in it. Now, with compound interest, we're, during year one, we're still going to get the 10% on the principal, which, is, which ends up being uh, $100, oops, $110, you know, just like we did for year one, right, underneath simple interest. However, with compound interest, what we're getting now is interest on interest. Okay, we're not getting interest on principal. Right? So when we get interest on interest in compounding, we get in the second year, in year two, we get 10% of the $110, not 10% of 100. So at the end of year two, the interest that we earn, 10% of 110, is $11. And if we add that to the uh, amount that we have in the bank account at that time, at the end of year two, we have $121 instead of, <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, we have $121 instead of 120. Now, you know, that doesn't seem like too much, um, you know, only $1, but we're only talking about 100 bucks here, okay? And it was a one-time deposit of $100, right? Um, in chapter 12, it's going to cover, you know, more in depth about compound interest, but I just wanted to give you uh, some indication uh, as to what's the difference between simple and compound interest. Um, Albert Einstein, you know, he basically said the most powerful uh, concept in the world um, of all time is this idea of compounding, okay? And, you know, I've been... You know, I'm older and I didn't take advantage of it, you know, because I didn't learn it and I didn't have it, you know, it didn't stick into my head. But I'm, uh, you know, I know of a young woman who is only like 22 years old and she asked me for my advice. And I said to her, I said, look it, you know, because she's thinking college and this and that and, you know, how to do this and how to do that. And I said, it, you know, it really is very simple at her age. If she could make one extra hundred dollars each month okay so times 12 months she'd put 
she'd have twelve hundred dollars and if she kept on putting that one hundred dollars a month into uh, an account and was able to get eight percent on the account which is not that difficult to do if you know how to do it um, and she didn't touch it you know she just kept putting it in putting it in putting it in and never ever 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 touched it well then what would happen is um, as she put the money in put the money in it would gain a little bit a little bit but later on then all of a sudden it would grow exponentially okay, and in these first these first years here it seems like nothing much is happening as you can see right here you know that was only one dollar and you know uh, you know twenty one dollars in two years you know, it doesn't seem like much but when you get to the point in compounding you reach a point of critical mass where <coughs> the amounts you know are just growing exponentially and if she did that for 30 or 40 years 30 years not even 30 years depending upon how much you put in okay um, you know she could create massive wealth um, but people don't understand this and people don't know about it and they don't learn about it you know uh, beforehand so I don't know where you are in life you know I you know later in life and can I take advantage of this well you know of the compounding effect yeah but I have to put in a lot more money I can't be putting in a hundred dollars a month I have to be putting in four hundred five hundred dollars a month in order to be able to get the same kind of exponential growth um, but her at the age of 22 it's very easy to make a hundred an extra hundred dollars a month you know she's like well I a job no yeah you get a job to be able to live okay but instead of watching TV on at nights or on weekends, okay, you know you, you can simply make something and go to a flea market and sell it and make an extra hundred dollars a month. You know, I mean, it's it really is that simple. Okay, it's not a no-brainer, and you know, but you're you're trading your time and from the TV and from the cell phone, and you're doing something that's a little bit more constructive that allow you a, a lifestyle that you dream about you hear other people but you know you can't get for yourself because why you're make, you're working at your job you're making money and you're spending it instead of banking it and, and letting it work so um, I'm gonna get off that soapbox here I'm sorry about that but I'm you know this is one of the things that I'm extremely passionate about is this idea of compounding interest but that's for chapter 12 and right now we're talking about simple interest okay so next thing um, formulas all right basically two formulas there's maturity value is equal to the principal plus the interest okay meaning if I had uh, uh, say ten thousand uh, dollars let me do it like this if I had ten thousand dollars of principal okay and the interest on that ten thousand is say two thousand dollars all right that means the total amount um, is twelve thousand dollars that's my maturity value okay it's it's just as simple as that it's knowing what your principal is figuring out what your interest is and just adding the two together to get your maturity value right. now we have this other formula here which says simple interest um, is equal to principal times rate times time so I have my interest is equal to my principal times the rate times the time and this is an important formula um, because as you can see we have principal the rate is a percentage the interest rate the time is however long in order to be able to calculate the simple interest right? now here's the thing this formula can be manipulated all right um, what if you want what if you know if you know three out of the four you can always figure out the other one okay you know it's like you know two plus three is equal to what right well you know two out of three you're able to figure out the other one or let's say you had two plus what is equal to five you know two out of three you're able to find the other the other one well this is the same exact thing if you know three out of the four three out of the four of these you're always able to find the other one but in order to do that now you have to kind of like be doing all of this here math in order to arrive at it okay or you can memorize the formulas all right and uh, but me personally I have a tendency not to want to do that um, I mean I'm lazy but I also know that if I you know I, I need to know this this initial formula for interest okay principal times rate times time very easy to remember 
but let's say um, I want to find, um, I know everything but the principal, and I want to find the principal. Well, now what is the formula? Okay. Well, it's very, very simple. Whether I'm looking for principal, or I'm looking for rate, or I'm looking for time, okay, the formula will always have the interest in the numerator. Okay. And whatever else is left goes in the denominator, meaning interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Well, if I want to find the principal and I know the interest, then out of the formula, all I have left is just the rate and the time. So in the denominator, I put my rate and multiply it times the time. It's just that simple, okay? I don't have to be uh, making it way too complicated. Right? Um, the same with rate, okay? Well, in order to, f if I wanted to figure out what the rate is, I put the interest in the in the numerator, and what am I left with? All I have is principal and time, so I multiply principal times time. And if I wanted to figure out the time, right, I put the interest in the numerator, and what am I left with? The principal times the rate. Okay. Notice the pattern here. All right. If I know this first formula, interest is equal to principal times rate times time, which is relatively easy to remember. Okay. Then if I want to be able to figure out one of the other things, principal, rate, or time, it's very easy for me to remember the formula because all I need to do is just put the interest in the numerator and whatever I have left goes in the denominator. Okay? And this way I don't have four formulas to remember. All I have to do is just remember one formula and just the, the quick little, you know, oh, here's my association in order to be able to figure out the other three. Okay? All right, so I hope you got that, and if not, pause the video, you know, rewind it, and watch it again. Um, I'm at 12 minutes, and I'm going to have to talk about the time next, so I'm going to pause the video here and pick up in the next video.